All right, so yesterday we talked about the parts of the compound microscope. And again, today we will be reviewing those. And so this is one type of compound microscope. This is sort of similar to the one we saw in our diagram yesterday. It'll be similar to the one that will be on your quiz uh, on Monday, in which you're going to have to label um, the different parts of this microscope. Okay? So if we look at these parts, what would you call them? Um, let's start up here. What is that called? Bailey? That's the eyepiece. Write that down. What's the eyepiece? The scope. Yeah, this part here that you look through is the eyepiece. I have a question. Like, you know how, like, yesterday we were looking at the new one? Like, yep. And it has that, look, that light thing on it? Yep. That's a mirror? In this one, it's a mirror. On our microscopes, it's not. Yeah, I know. But yes. Like, on the test, if it shows that, would we say the mirror? You could say mirror or you could say light source. It, it would be fine. Okay, it's up there on the board. So, the eyepiece. Um, how about this part? Sophia? It's the body tube. How about these two things? Bailey? Yeah, the coarse and fine adjustments. Remember, the larger knob is the coarse adjustment. It focuses a lot. It moves the stage or the body tube a lot. The fine adjustment moves a small amount. This part that supports everything. Brendan? The arm. That's the arm. Oh, sorry. The part you rotate to switch from one objective to the other is the nose piece. And these lenses that you can select are called the objective lenses. How about this part, this flat area? What's that called? Olivia? Stage. That's the stage. What are these things called? Vinny? Stage clips. Stage clips. How about underneath the stage, this apparatus here? Brennan? The diaphragm? The diaphragm. It adjusts the amount of light. The light source is underneath, or in this case, it's a mirror. And then it rests on the base. Don't worry about that one. We're not going to have condenser control. And those are the parts of the microscope. So down at test, are we going to have a word book? Yes. So here are some things shown under the microscope. See if you can guess what they are. A ruler. Oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh no, 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 wait, 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 um, a cactus. No. Something you probably don't, maybe don't use a whole lot anymore. I don't know anything about this. It's a CD. CD? Oh. You know, they put your CD player? That's the surface. That is nasty. Clay. No. What? This oh. might give you a hint. These things. A broken house. No. A CD. I did not use this this morning. The bathroom brush. <laughs> Stupid. No. Shave razor. The razor. Oh. What? Those are the blades. These are the hairs. Oh, oh my God. Hairs. They look like pencils. Yeah, I know. That's gross. This is a cool one. No, not Rock. s'mores cereal. Minerals. Not Cocoa Krispies and marshmallows. Minerals. Rocks. Minerals. You're close. Minerals? Oh, yeah, I already said that. 
Yeah, one of these. One of these is a mineral. Yes. Salt. It's salt and pepper. What's that? Wait, what? Salt, the white crystals, and then pepper. Marshmallows. They're, they're probably like really oh, close. Yeah, that's Velcro. Do you know what the um, generic name for Velcro is? Something fastener. It's called hook and loop fastener. What The way Velcro works, this is sort of the scratchy side of the Velcro. It's made of a whole bunch of sort of flexible plastic hooks. And then the softer side of the Velcro, that's made of this just sort of loops of plastic. Like okay. And when you press them together, the hooks kind of latch onto those loops and what you, it stays closed. When you pull on it, these are flexible and it separates and they sort of bend and it separates from the uh, hooks. Shit. That looks weird. Okay. 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 I know you are, but this is a uh, toilet paper. Whoa. The surface of toilet paper nice. made of all those strands of, of paper. This um, one you probably won't get, but it's kind of interesting. Is it like something stretchy? So like a, yeah, it is something stretchy. This is nylon stockings, like that, um, a girl would wear stockings. They're made of these tiny fibers, these stretchy fibers of nylon. You look stretchy. All right, so let's talk about a few de um, facts about the compound microscope. It's called a compound microscope. Like, what's a compound word? Yeah, doghouse. Um, playground. Playground, good. So it's made of two words put together. A compound microscope is called that because it has two lenses working together, the eyepiece and the objective lens. They both magnify the image. So there are two lenses that magnify the image at all times, the objective lens and the eyepiece lens. So we often want to know how much is this image being magnified. If I'm looking at an object in the microscope, I want to know, well, how much bigger is it appear to be in this microscope versus its actual size? We calculate that very simply by multiplying the power of the eyepiece times the power of the objective lens. You multiply the magnification of those two lenses. So if you're viewing a specimen and you have a 10x eyepiece and a 30x objective lens, what is the total amount of magnification? Sophia? What's that? Yeah, it'd be 300x. It means it's appears to be 300 times larger than its actual size. It's magnifying the image 300 times. When you carry a microscope, it's important to carry it properly so that you don't drop it or bump it because they are fragile. So you always carry them with two hands. You have one hand on the base and one hand on the arm. question people ask is, I don't see anything, okay? I don't see anything here. And so it's important that you follow the proper procedure so that you can actually use the microscope effectively. So there's a couple important points. First off, you always start on low power, the smallest objective, the shortest one. On our microscopes, it's always red. It's a 4X objective one. So you start on low power. 
you clip your slide that you're looking at onto the stage. You make sure that it's centered. So you'll see the light shining through the stage. That's where the specimen needs to be. So if you see a, the specimen, you have to make sure it's right over the light. And then what you do is you look through the eyepiece and you try to focus it. Okay? You focus it using the course adjustment knob when you're on low power. And that's how you that's how you see an object in the microscope. So you clip it in. For example, I have a microscope here. Okay. I have my slide. I clip it in. I make sure it's centered over the light. I make sure I'm on low power. I look through the microscope and then I adjust using the course adjustment until I see that it's in focus. And then I can see my object. Then often I'm gonna to wanna to switch and see it closer, so I switch to a higher power. To do that, what we do is we keep it on low power and first we make sure what we want to sort of zoom in on is right in the middle of my field of view. When you look through the microscope, you see a circle. That's called your field of view. You make sure what you want to zoom in is right on the middle. And then, okay, you can switch to medium power. You, rot you leave everything the way it is, then you rotate to the medium power objective. And again, you follow the same procedure. You look at it, it probably won't be perfectly in focus, but it's gonna be close. It's almost perfectly in focus. I make any final adjustments again. And now I can see it under medium power. Again, if I wanna to switch to another power, even higher power, I need to make sure it's centered. And right now mine is not, so I would move so that it's right in the center. Okay. I make sure it's in focus. And now I could switch to the highest power. Again, leave everything the way it is. Rotate the nose piece. Now notice, when I switch this to high power, it's very, very close to the slide. How do I focus from here on out? Bailey? I don't use the course adjustment. I only use the fine adjustment. So I switch to high power, and now I focus with the fine adjustment. That should just say fine adjustment, not course, fine. Now on our microscopes that we use those kind back there, remember the coarse adjustment and fine adjustment are built into one knob. So when you switch to high power, you just use the smaller part of that knob to focus. And then you should see your object, it should be clear. Okay. So when we look at something, we, we focus, we make sure it's centered, then we can switch to a higher power. Again, we wanna go higher, we make sure it's focused, make sure it's centered, and then I can switch to the highest power, okay? Okay, a couple last things. They say you should try to keep both eyes open when you view things in the microscope. I don't, I'm not able to do that very well. You can try it, it prevent some eye strain, but if you can't, that's okay. So here I'm looking at a living organism, a paramecium. When you look in the microscope, this is what you see. This is called your field of view. You'll see a little pointy thing in there, a needle it looks like. That's part of the eyepiece. It's not something on your slide. It's built into the eyepiece. And if you rotate the eyepiece, that will move. It will rotate around. You can use that to point out something to somebody. You can say, okay, look just above the pointer so somebody can refer to it. All right. So. Under low power, this is my view. I would see all of this. What happens when I switch to medium power? How much of this am I gonna see? Am I gonna see more of it? A wider angle? No, because I'm increasing my magnification. How much am I gonna see? If I look across the courtyard, then I put on binoculars. How much of the courtyard am I gonna see? Less of it, right? It's gonna be bigger, but I see less. Then I switch to a high power telescope. How much am I gonna see? even less, but it's larger, okay? So, when I switch to medium power, I only see maybe about that much, but it's gonna be bigger. And when I switch to high power, even less, I'm zooming in each time. What we say is our field, that's called our field of view. So as your magnification increases, your field of view decreases, you see less and less of it. 
So if we think about our microscopes, all of our microscopes have a 10x eyepiece. Our objective lenses are either 4, 10, or 100. So when you have the low power, you have, you're looking through the eyepiece, you have the low power objective lens in place. What's your total magnification? Lydia? 40. So when we have low power, what we see is 40 times larger than it is in real life. Then when I switch to medium power, I have a 10x objective, a 10x eyepiece. What, Ryan, what's my total magnification? 100. It's 100. And then I switch to the high power objective, the 40x objective. Then what is my power? Eddie? 400. 400. So as we, our field of vision is sort of what we see as we look through the microscope. And as our magnification increases, as we zoom in, what happens to our field of vision, the area we see? As we zoom in, what happens? area of the field that we see as we zoom in. Sophia? Uh, yeah. So it gets smaller. As our magnification gets higher, our field of vision decreases. And the opposite is also true. As our magnification decreases, our field of vision increases. If you want to see a wider area in your slide, you switch to a lower power. here today. That's called an inverse relationship too, by the way. Your math teacher would appreciate you mentioning that. As one thing goes up, the other goes up. So if I'm looking at something under low power, if I'm looking at some strange object under low power, I have the 10x eyepiece, the 4x objective lens for a total magnification of 40 x. So I can see all of this weird creature when I'm on low power. So my field of view is what? Do I have a small field of view or medium or large? Large. I see a wide area. I can see all of this hideous beast. <laughs> Then when I switch to medium power, again, my eyepiece is still 10x, but I have the 10x objective lens, giving me a total magnification of 100x. Now, as I switch to medium power to view this strange creature, what kind of field of view do I have? Eddie? What? No, is it, do I have a small field of view, medium, or a large field of view? Nick? Medium. Medium. I can't quite see as much as here, but I can still see I thought you meant, um, most of this weird animal. And then finally, if I'm a glutton for punishment and I want to see this object up closer, and I switch to high power, again, I would have a 10x eyepiece. I would have a 40x objective lens giving me a magnification of what? 400. 400. And what kind of field of view? Small. Small field of view. <laughs> Sophia, a question? Oh, what? That's scary. Why? What? That's scary. Get that away from me. I don't know. Oh, you have a different picture in your notes? It looks oh. like you. Hmm. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> yeah, it looks so beautiful. <laughs> I guess this must be a different version of the presentation. All right, any questions? What? Yeah. I don't know, because he, he, he sometimes doesn't shower for a couple weeks at a time and sometimes gets like his eyes get red and stuff. So. All right. So any questions about microscopes?